Okay, so I want to do a quick little video about Bono's bits. I've had a few people ask me about what I use and why I use it. I've seen a few questions pop up, um, some confusion. So just a quick little video about Bono's bits in general and mainly towards about how to use them when you're doing a 3D relief. So Bono's bits are generally used for contour cutting. That means cutting on a shape, a curve. Um, you can use them for different applications. You could use larger ball nose bits for putting a curve on the bottom of a pocket. You can use these small little guys for very fine detail, um, very fine text. Taper ball nose bits, as you can see, are quite different even though the diameter of the tip might be the same as a straight nose. These are more versatile in certain aspects where these have their place as well. So the main advantage of a tapered ball nose is the length of the cutting edge. And this is useful when doing 3D release because when you're doing a model, and I'll show you an example in a bit, you use the edge of the taper to actually remove material as you're going up and down. Now, if you look at this, these two bits that we have here, these are both one 32nd inch ball nose bits. This is a tapered, obviously. This is a straight flute. Now the taper, because it's a quarter inch shank down to a 1 32nd, this allows me a much larger cutting edge and a much more rigid, more, more robust bit which allows you to cut much deeper, cut much, much faster than you would with this little guy. You could almost get away with using this in certain applications, but you really need to, to pay attention because obviously this small little bit is not gonna be able to do what the bigger bit does. Another thing that new people get a little confused of when they start looking and purchasing bits is if they're doing a 3D relief, they're gonna jump and get the smallest tip that they can, thinking that they will get the most detail out of that bit, which is true. You're obviously gonna get more detail out of this little guy than this bigger one. But one thing you need to keep in mind is that everything is based off of step over. Now, for those who don't know who's, what step over is, I'm gonna use a square and mill as an example. And what step over is, is basically the percentage that this bit will move over for the next pass. So if you're using, a, if you're clearing an area with a square step, square end mill, you're going to use 30, 40% as a step over. That means that this bit is going to move over 30% of the diameter of the tip the next pass. So if you did the exact same thing with a ball nose bit, because the point of contact for a ball nose is the base the very bottom. If I stepped over this bit 30%, I'm going to end up with ridges, waves, whatever you want to call it. Because basically the bottom, the contact point of this bit is not going to be contacting the flat bottom of my, my pocket if I go over 30% because 30% is going to be up into the curve. So one thing to think about when you're purchasing one of these tapered ball nose for 3D relief is a typical step over for a finishing pass on a model is between six to 10%. I like to run about seven to 8%. Some people go 10, it's a little bit faster. Um, you can, sometimes you can notice it, it all depends on what you're cutting. So if you are doing a 1 32nd inch bit, if you're doing 7% step over on that tiny, tiny little edge, you're looking at a lot of cut time. And while this will get you more detail, you need to weigh the pros and cons if that detail is worth it. Are you okay with running a 20 hour cut time or did you wanna run a six or seven hour cut time? Just the difference in these two bits with that small percentage, it's a lot of time that people don't think about. We're gonna go over uh, in the software and I'm gonna run a bunch of simulations and show you the difference of what a larger bit does with a high step over right down to this little one. And we'll see right on the screen 
the amount of detail that you can achieve and you can see the subtle differences but that will allow you to weigh the pros and cons. So this is the model that we're going to take a look at. So this is something that I've carved and this will give you an idea of the detail um, that you can get. Now I believe I used this bit for this carving and this carving is uh, 12, 13 by 9 inches I think and this took about seven hours so just to put that into perspective so if you were to use a larger ball nose like this you can see right away that this large ball nose is not going to fit into these pockets it's not going to be able to go down to the depth that I wanted it to and it's also not going to give me these nice sharp edges because the radius of the tip of the ball nose is just not as defined as this needs to be. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the computer, we'll do a couple simulations, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so here we are in CarveCo Maker Plus. And what I'm gonna do is run a few simulations using different step overs and different size ball nose. Now, this is the same size model as what I had shown earlier. This is basically what I used. This is the detail, um, as detailed as the model gets, as supplied. This is one that I bought offline. So let's uh, run a couple of different tool paths and we'll see what we get. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be a quarter inch. Now, to do this properly, you would run a roughing pass. I'm not going to do that for the sake of the video to speed things up. I'm just going to go straight to finishing pass. The computer's not going to care. It's still going to give us the proper simulation. So this ball knows, I'll show you what I have it set up at. So my step over is quite large for what a relief is, but I don't use this. Typically I don't use a quarter inch ball nose for reliefs, but it is possible. So let's just go with the quarter inch ball nose. And we'll run the simulation and see what it looks like. You'll notice the smaller the bits get, the more, uh, the longer it'll take to run our simulations. So let's simulate our toolpath. And you can see right away that that looks like crap. So that is with the quarter inch ball nose running at step over I had which I think was about 40% and with that ball nose you're gonna get a lot of this this cupping and that's like I mentioned before the ball nose the bottom the contact point of the ball nose is stepping over too far from the flat bottom surface so let's just go in and change the parameters of this so let's go in and we'll change our step over to uh, 6% and we'll see what we get. You can see already it took longer to calculate. So hopefully you can see here that the difference that the step over made, instead of being able to see each individual uh, pass, now the screen is red solid with all the passes. So let's simulate this, we're gonna go right over top And right there, you can see that with the quarter inch ball nose, it actually did a pretty good job. But let's just take a look at some of the features. That way, when we come back and look at the smaller bits, we'll see the difference. So first thing I notice is it's not going all the way down in between these two. I'm not sure what they're called, reins. Um, look at the detail in the mouth and the nose. I'll just keep that in the back of our minds. And you can see that there's no sharp edge around the bottom of the bit because this detail is being dictated by the quarter inch ball nose. So let's go to our next one. And for this one, let's go with 
uh, NH. And again, I'm going to go right over top of the simulations because I know every step down that we go, it's going to take off more material. You can, re you should, if you're doing this, reset your simulation and apply a new simulation. You can already tell this took longer, more information involved. So let's go and simulate this. And right there, you can see from the jump that it made, uh, there's a lot more detail. That material is gone. More detail around here. There's more detail in the mouth. It's got down a little bit deeper around the circle. So, I mean, really, this, I think this is actually, I might have gone down one size smaller than this, but this is, this is, I think, perf perfectly acceptable. But just for fun, let's go down to the smallest bit that I have, and that's 130 seconds. So let's try another one. Now we can see quickly when the screen changes. So right there, you can tell that the amount of detail has increased quite substantially between the eighth inch and the one thirty second. Would most people be able to tell? Probably not. But I'll do a couple of screenshots and I'll run them uh, back to back. That way you can kind of get an idea just of the difference in detail. Hopefully this helps uh, some new people that are, are starting to, you know, get their, their feet wet in the 3D relief modeling? There's no right and wrong answer. Um, it depends on what your goal and your outcome is. If you're selling these, you might want to take this into account. There's a big difference between you know, a six hour cut and a 20 hour cut. And you need to look and justify if there's a return on the time invested. And trust me, when, you, when you're halfway through a cut and something happens which it's bound to happen uh, it's a real pain in the butt to, to have to start cutting you know a 10 hour cut because you're five hours in and your machine hit the clamp and you lost a step so just keep all that in mind when you're picking your bid hope that helped and any questions comments let me know thanks a lot